Okay, guys, so welcome everyone. It's another wonderful meeting of the weekly fasting group. Those, webinar, those webinars are organized within the framework of the weekly fasting group, which is a big international online community operating on WhatsApp. And the goal of this big group is to cultivate the habit of abstaining from food, of fasting, at least for 24 hours every week as a group at a certain time. And we have people who come virtually from very, very different backgrounds, very different cultures, very different spiritual backgrounds, dietary backgrounds. And everyone is accepted. It doesn't have any agenda. We have raw vegans, we have keto, we have carnivore, we have just vegans, vegetarians. Everyone is welcome. And this group operates in the spirit of tolerance. And we are just here to learn from each other about different natural healing modalities and approaches. So that's the philosophy of the group. So if you are watching this video later on, and if those ideals appeal to you, you would love to cultivate the habit of fasting, whatever reasons you have behind that, you are welcome to send me a WhatsApp message. My name is Arik, I am the moderator of this group, and my, you will find my contact details below this video. It's gonna be on YouTube, open to everyone. Okay, so that was a brief introduction about the framework. Now, today we have Soledad with us. Namaste. And Soledad is originally from Argentina, but now she lives in Australia. You have been living there for how long? Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, Ari. Thank you hello. for, first of all, thank you very much for your invitation and also for your interest in, in knowing my point of view and my perspective in, in this life. Uh, yeah, I've been living in Australia for four years now. Wow. Okay, so what made you want to move from Argentina to Australia? Um, mm, different reasons, uh, really, but uh, I felt that it was um, a moment of uh, change for me in a lot of ways, and one of the changes was to move geographically. Mm -hmm. uh, and Australia was always like a place that I I wish to visit because more because of the wildlife here. Uh, so that that's why I chose Australia. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So Soledad, I'm so so curious about you as a being. Very curious. So what my first question is, since mm -hmm. what age? Did you feel that you were different from others in terms of your vision of life? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that we are all different from each other, no? Uh, we are yes, all in, yes. In social, in I mean, um, yeah, I mean, since what age uh, um, did you start thinking out of the box? Like um, you understood mm. that there are certain other ways of development other than most okay. people develop. Okay, perfect. Now I I, I, I got it. Um, I think from very little uh, because since I'm um, a very young age, uh, I was starting, for example, to ask myself, who I, I am I? <laughs> uh, what am I doing here? Um, who are my parents? Uh, and also start to observe the world, the nature. Uh, and it was like, I don't know, I, I think probably at, my, at the age of five years old, when also I started uh, to reject uh, the meat from the food. That's why I think my first step was also uh, related with the uh, external food intake. I started to reset the meat. Um, in parallel, that I was starting to get uh, more in contact and in connect a connection with nature and with animals, especially because I have a very special relationship with animals in general. And I I came to the conclusion, I remember this since little, that I was eating basically dead sentient beings 
and that shocked me a lot. And and it was it wasn't easy as a kid because I have difficulties with my family at that moment, uh, being so young and uh, be, um, being in a family that was maybe in, in that point and other points inside the box the box singers, uh, meat eaters, uh, well, coming from Argentina, huge tradition of of eating meat and and do big gatherings with family and friends around meat and around big foods. And I was never feel very comfortable with that really. So at the beginning it was a really harm that my parents started to hide the meat and mixing with other stuff for me to not know about that, but and force me a little bit to eat and it was difficult. Um, so I started like that really. Um, the advantage of that, of having that, um, of belong, belonging to that uh, family really is that I have time and space for myself since little. Because as I was the different one, you know, the, we call it sometimes the black sheep or whatever. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I was alone all the time. So that time, so uh, that moment and time for myself, I started to sing to, uh, to, to, to observe and to sing more and all this, yeah, this, uh, the question of who am I, what am I doing here since little, I think it helps me to, from, to my development uh, as a human being, no? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, when I uh, had the freedom, so to speak, and the completely understanding, uh, I became vegetarian and then well vegan. And then I don't know if, if you want me to, to, to talk about this transition with the food and, and, and the liquid yeah. and well, now, if you want to. Yeah, yeah. I, first of all, when you talked about a deep connection with animals, I wanted to ask you if you had any experience really like communicating with animals at a deep level, maybe telepathically or really understanding their intentions, like, you know, really, really deep connections. Did you have this kind of experiences? Yes, I had from little and uh, yeah, because I had the opportunity to um, live near like um, a farm with a lot of farm animals. Uh, so I w w was always around animals, by myself with the animals all the time, and I had experience in in in, in communicating with them. In really, um, how how can I say this? In really, feel them, not with my mind, just from like a intuition or just a feeling that comes from maybe from the heart, from that that is related with emotions. Of, of loving them and and start to really listen to them in a, obviously not not in a it wasn't like a communication with words but it was really knowing them mm -hmm. uh, so to look looking at them or to touching them uh, so yeah <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. that uh, I I became also animal rescuer then when I when I was uh, teenager or, or young uh, because we have a um, issue with animals especially well dogs especially dogs and cats in the street in Argentina so mm -hmm. I became animal rescue and my food intake or diet uh, if you can call it that way uh, it started to change because at the beginning because of the animals mm. but then uh, straight away obviously I realized that uh, that change will help me, uh, at least from my per perspective, obviously, will help me to um, to my development, develop as human beings also, mm -hmm. not eating meat, no? Uh, because for me, uh, at, at least for me, it's something that dents me a lot. It's, it's very heavy. I see, um, I see. Yeah, so could you say that uh, while growing up, um, your friends were mostly animals rather than human friends, or you also had uh, lots of lots of like kids 
as friends while growing up? Uh, yeah, also, but I always prefer to be around animals or so just to be on top of a tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? uh, yes, I, yes, I, yes. It, one of my challenges in life, and it's still a challenge now as, a day, as an adult, uh, is, uh, yeah, is the way I communicate with human beings more than the animals, you know, mm. it's a challenge for me to, to try to, in fact, this, for example, I want to say, um, well, I have, if you don't mind, I have my, my, uh, um, no, this is like as a guidance, guidelines, uh, with the topics that we are going to discuss today. And if you don't mind, I might be checking this uh, once in now, to, because to be honest, the, I'm out of my element here. I'm not used to be uh, myself openly through a camera. Yes. I prefer face-to-face -face encounters, obviously. But also because of this, um, uh, yeah, I'm very grateful and I'm, I'm feeling very blessed for the opportunity of, of uh, um, be it talk with you here yes. and with all the people that are mm -hmm. on the other side in this space and time but uh, but yeah it, I'm out of my element and uh, but on the other hand I think uh, humanity is in a, um, a state we all know more or less uh, in a moment of awakening and I really feel uh, that um, a commitment with the collective and with the truth, at least with our truth, and to put ourselves uh, out uh, on at, at the service of others is a duty nowadays. Absolutely. Spreading our, spreading our voice with our truth is a duty. So that, that's why I'm here, even if it is difficult. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it so much. Well done. Well done. Yes, and feel free, you know. If you need some water to drink, if you need to look at your notes, just feel, feel absolutely I'm, I'm free, you know, I'm, we're all friends here. Hope, hmm? Yeah, hopefully I, I, don't, I don't want to uh, break my drive fasting, ah, okay. <laughs> my intermittent drive fasting. I okay. think I will be fine. But, but yeah, no, I just wanted to let you know that. And yeah, yeah that's it. I, I, I see this as a, as a challenge, you know, also that I have wow. to face. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. opportunity that you give me that is very important it's like a, a challenge because i don't see anything as problems or issue i, I see everything as, as an opportunity and as a challenge exactly and it's also a challenge a personal challenge that i have to face <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I appreciate it so much for that really well done well done i really admire you so 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 tell us a little bit so then um after you actually real start after you started thinking out of the box, what was your path, both in terms of your physical healing or nutrition, whatever it tells you, but also in terms of spirituality? Like what, what were your stations? Were you, were you parts of certain groups related to spirituality or to healing? Like how do you, what have you done so far? Uh, no, when I was growing up, uh, so to speak, young teenager, Mm, not too much. I um, all this I I done all what I what I done. It was in my loneliness, really. Mm -hmm. But I have like double life, to be honest with you. <laughs> I I felt that I had a double life because I had my my life with myself when uh, where I was searching about this this about a lot of things that you can you can tell that are related with the spirituality or um, self-develop or I don't know um, and I did that for myself with myself in the yeah in the lon loneliness of my room <laughs> uh, because to be honest I didn't have um, anyone else to talk about these topics uh, on the other side, my, my, my other life was maybe in a school and then in the university, the very traditional path of a school, university, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I, I never liked. I never felt comfortable about it. But, well, uh, yeah. I was I was still awakening in other other stuff. So I was like, 
and and I had another life where I was very social with my friends and going out, the typical, no? The typical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't have that part of that. I was interested in talking about different topics and my friends were interested in talking about that. Mm. So, so really, yeah. Yeah, so could you, could, could you say that you felt lonely even being with other people? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. But the sensation of feeling lonely was it wasn't about bad sensation at all. Eh? Well, obviously, yeah, maybe at the beginning when I didn't understand the importance of being alone. Uh, yeah, of course, I, I have a little bit of suffer because I, as a teenager, especially I, I didn't understand really. Uh, and I wanted really to say why, why not my friends or, or even my family members. I don't like to say too much family. Family, I like to say lineage, but I must be using family because family come from a group of slaves. <laughs> but well, uh, yeah, my biological lineage. Um, um, yeah, I, I I wish them to 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 be with me talking about this file, philosophical. Uh, I don't know um, um, things, but. I never had that. Mm. Then, then eventually, yes, eventually, yes. When when I start to understand how I I I uh, can work with my energy and what my intentions and with my vibration, suddenly I started to um, yeah to um, gather with people that were in the same vibration than me. When I start, when I, I started to know how to to work with the energy, uh, but yeah, but at the beginning when I was young, I didn't have that. Mm, very interesting. And how how did you discover the ways of working with your energy, with your vibrations? Was it every all by yourself, or you got some external guidance as well? Um, well, I did. I um, did some courses, different type of courses or so, um, or trainings, uh, and someone were face to face with a teacher. Some was online also with a with a teacher. So yeah, I had that. Uh, like for example, well, the typical at the beginning, Reiki, and uh, different type of meditation, uh, Qigong, that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, I have the opportunity of a change with someone else or with a group, and and yeah, for me, um, working with the energy is first of all is working with the energy that is in you, and also working with the energy that is around you, and um, because also understanding that uh, the ener the energy the energy sorry goes where your attention goes where you put your focus that's why also the mindset is very important where you you put your attention and your focus the energy goes there uh, and also to have a clean a clean body and a clean mind allow you to feel more the energy of course and the practice of of different type of activities that are very simple and anyone can do it uh, i used to I used to be another type of person in my past with a lot of anger, for example, and I used to, even I may still like it, but in a different way. I used to, for example, train very hard boxing. I used to do a sparring and all boxing because I had this sensation, oh, I need to punch a bag. Well, that is working with the energy also. But now, for example, I prefer other type of activities that are more simple, are more in tune with, a balanced energy also. And uh, yeah, so yeah, for me, for example, uh, well, meditation is number one, uh, of course, um, especially I'm talking about the, uh, how do you call it? Um, tradition, tradi meditation as like um, the typical tradition technique of sitting and and no, you know, uh, we we talk about it. I practice uh, the vipassana technique. That for me is one of the best because it requires a lot of practice, obviously. But 
the technique is really very simple, straight to the point, um, very clear. Uh, you don't need visualization. You don't need really anything. It's it's, it's very simple. It's, and it's uh, I like simple things. Um, and also allows you to, that is one of the topics that we are going to discuss today, allows you to ask any kind of meditation really, but especially in my opinion, Vipassana, to be in the present moment. moment you, you, can, you can feel yourself as, a, uh, as one, as a unity uh, with you and with the rest of, of, of the reality that is around you. And all is there. All is happening at the same time. All is eternal. So this sensation of meditation and in the present moment is very important also, also to work with the energy. Um, but really for me, to be, yeah, meditation is a really a state that also requires a, a, a good mindset. It's a state because it's really, I don't want to say rich, it's a stage, a stage that you need to reach because we don't need to reach anything really. I, but sometimes I use, I have to change this. I, I use the, the I, I'm still using the word reach a lot and I, and I don't resonate with that. Uh, for me, it's, that it's a state that you can tune yourself. This is like the frequencies, it's like a radio that you tune the, the channel of the radio is very easy to understand like that or mm -hmm. you tune you you change the the channels of the tv if you are in one channel you are not in you know um so it's a state that we, you have to tune yourself and you can do i meditate also while while i'm dancing for example i last i love to express myself in in through dancing and i i i tune myself with uh, to a meditative state while I'm dancing. Um, so it's not only the, the all, also for me, it's a must to have the traditional meditation in a point, the practice, but also you can uh, tune to that meditative state uh, with other stuff, no? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, we were talking about the energy, uh, working with the energy also, I um, do breathing exercises. Uh, especially also retention with retention, uh, breathing retention. At that moment, I have experience out of my body, especially when, in the retention moments. And also I can feel my energy and the energy outside and work with my energy and tune to this meditative state through breathing, breathing exercise also. And mm -hmm. everyone can do this. Um, I incorporate also the exhalation is very important in the breathing exercise because um, it helps helps you to release toxins to mm -hmm. exhale. Um, also, it can help you in not directly but in an indirectly way. Sorry with my English. <laughs> my Absolutely accent. fine. Everything is clear. No problem. Uh, it can help you also indirectly uh, cold exposure and saunas. The, the, the heat and the cold exposure with the skin, it will help you because also when you start also doing fasting and also trying, um, we start receiving the nourish and from other sources and the skin is very important, plays a, a, play a, a very important role. Uh, so that's why cold exposure and saunas and this technique or ice baths or whatever or having a, a cold shower and then do saunas especially the natural ones like the temascali i don't know if you know about the temascali and all, all over the world are these sweat lush that are on the ground with the mm -hmm. they made with natural mater material is uh, especially around nature is very nice and you can search in in uk in israel you 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 might have possibilities to to go to temascalis and it's a very nice experience um and also uh, stretching a lot of stretching and doing massage also allows you not only 
when, when you work with energy, it's also for me important the blood circulation. So also massage, stretching, and also when you are doing fasting, it's very important. Um, and another another activities, um, I do falun, I do personally falun dafa after trying qigong, some some kind of qigong tai chi. I try falun dafa and I really like it because it's really very simple. Anyone can do it. And you can do a session of 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, uh, any any time, daytime, nighttime, wherever. It's pretty, really very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know if you know about Falun Dafa. I heard the name. I haven't experienced that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very nice. I recommend it that. And and yeah, and then obviously the typical walking, walking to to allow yourself to just move the energy, move the energy, walking in nature better, walking with a fresh air, no, mm -hmm. being yeah. outside, going to be outside to change the air all the time. And okay. also another thing that I do is um, upside down uh, postures or asanas yes. for the blood circulation that also helps you to to. To the energy to to flow and to to feel it. Also. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that so do you continue all those practices now while being a liquidarian? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's that's another that's the next uh, point I would like to take our conversation to. Tell us, please, about your path to like from standard diet, you know, Argentinian diet to mm -hmm. Britarian. What were you? You already mentioned that you started to abstain from meat, from animal products. Now, what was your next step on this path? Hmm. Uh, well, the next step from vegetarian is vegan. <laughs> okay. Becoming the, the typical. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, because I I started to reset uh, after that the the milk or the cheese. Um, yeah, something was going on inside me that was telling me. Okay, you have to start um, stopping this thing. So I became vegan. Uh, this was a long time ago. And how long, by the way? That, how, how long? Uh, that I became vegetarian from... That I became vegetarian, I don't know, I, how, how old am, am I? I'm a disaster with the numbers and the and the dates. I, I don't follow That's the... Fine, then. Calendar, That's fine, it's fine. It's fine, no problem, I'm no problem. I'm going to turn 38 this year in November. Probably uh, in like more than 20 years. Okay. Of, of this, uh, more than 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, some years ago, uh, I started the process of became, that was really a very quick process, to become Robigan after. And uh, it was a huge, I didn't saw that it is going to be like a huge change really from vegan to raw vegan, but it's a huge change to stop uh, stop eating cook, cook, um, food. Uh, it was a huge discovery. Um, this come also from the understanding of um, when I when I had my first approach to urine therapy. Uh, so I decided that I was starting to drink in my pee and I started to experience that because I have that uh, inner call of trying. Uh, I resonate with that information. At, at that stage, I, I was using urine therapy, but topically on the skin. Uh, and, and I was having very good results. Uh, being being vegan and also being vegan, I started with inter intimate fasting, uh, sixteen hours of no food and eight hours of food. That that changed a lot completely. It's, even just doing intimate fasting is really amazing. So I started to little by little to 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 uh, yeah to start doing different type of uh, fast uh, fasting after that. But my first approach to urine therapy, it was really amazing in, in, in my perspective because I tried my first sip of urine. One, one morning I just decided, okay, I'm going to pee in a, in a glass and I'm going to, to drink it. 
And really, I received the information straight away from my urine. What I had to do to keep on doing, what I, what I had to quit. What I, and with that information, I decided to become raw vegan. I quit completely the salt. I, I never was a very fan of the salt anyway, but I was still using a little bit of salt in my cook stuff. So that was gone completely at that minute. I didn't have to think about it. I knew it. And then a couple of weeks ago, I was just raw vegan. Um, and, and also, this was a huge uh, step in, in my de development because I started from that point to have an open, this is the words that I use, I really don't know how to describe it, but how to have a, an open channel uh, that allowed me to connect with myself. And I started to hear my inner voice that I call inner guy. Uh, you can call it higher self, someone call it God, you the universe, the source. I call it, I want to call it, I like to call it inner guy, but because I feel it comes from myself. Uh, and I really surrounded to that. I surrounded to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I, I knew I was in good hands. Uh, so I started to just feel this and, and, and yeah, and I will, and so I continue. Yeah, this, this inner guy was telling me, okay, this, 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 this. And I was like, okay, yeah, I have to do this. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, no worries. It's, it's like talking with some. It was strange at, 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 the, at the beginning. Uh, so they, after that, I I started to do one day of, I started to um, uh, try urine fast. But then I discovered the dry fast. And to be honest, I really like to my urine therapy, I drink every day my urine. I do a urine rub, rubbing some massage. I build in my, my bath to immerse in my urine. <laughs> and I do a lot of stuff with my urine. But then I discovered the dry fast and I say to myself, okay, this is the ultimate type of fasting for me. Uh, so now I, I, I now today I do a combination of, of dry fast uh, I um, well, I'm practicing the liquidarium. Um, yeah, I was I was uh, going back and forward with the li liquids. Um, this started with um, it's okay if I'm talking about this. Uh, yes, absolutely, I absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to talk I'm about. Talking. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sure. I'm talking with myself. I'm going like in order ah, to remember the. It's fascinating. Um, Your story is fascinating, really, <laughs> mind blowing. Stop me if I'm talking too much, because when I start, I have the I, I'm in the opposite. Or I, or no, I can like freeze no, myself, or I can start talking. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. And and uh, guys uh, who are listening, we are going to open our microphones soon, so um, they will be able to ask you questions. But first, please I finish will... your line of thought. Yeah, but very very just quick. And uh, then, um, I don't know, just maybe one year ago or a little bit less, I bought my first shoe set because I wanted to try shoes in uh, stuff. And I started uh, the shoes and I was like, oh, I, I think I can, I can live with just liquids. So I started the process of uh, becoming liquidarian because at that moment also, I was doing one day of dry fasting, two days, three days, this and that, doing a lot of combinations. So, and whenever I was uh, coming back to the food, the food was very heavy. And I was having raw salads, simple stuff. Eh? Uh, but it was very heavy for me. So that's why when I, oh, I'm seeing that liquid diet, it will be nice for me. So I was back and forward for some months with the liquids, just having maybe a um, tiny rosala once a week or some sick smoothie or some things that more like 
liquid, no liquid. What, and then I decided, okay, I'm going to do 100% liquid and, and see how it goes. So nice that I'm just drink um, all liquids. Uh, mostly is well, my urine <laughs> um, and uh, fruits and uh, um, juices uh, from fr fruits and vegetables, all seasonable, obviously try to buy local, organic and seasonable. And then uh, not every day, but also I do herbal teas with distilled water. Um, and that's it pretty much. And sometimes I do my own coconut milk. I prepare my own coconut milk, just coconut with water. And I do from time to time, but this is not very often. Uh, some, uh, for example, you know ash ashawanda powder? Yes, yes. Some type this that, those type of milk with those ashawanda powder and maybe cinnamon or cacao or or turmeric a powder turmeric milk those kind of stuff from time to time also mm -hmm. as liquids mm -hmm. but that is pretty too much I keep on practicing intermittent fasting sixteen hours eight I do one day or two days of dry fasting every week and just my urine in the morning enemas also daily with urine and when I feel it I do urine flashes also I don't do any more uh, uh, I used to uh, do the a couple of times the salty the salt flashes I, I cannot handle salt anymore <laughs> and I do urine flashes when I uh, whenever I, I want to do to help me with a bowel, bowel movement or I'm I'm currently doing a protocol with bitter herbs also that I made my for myself this week because I wanted to try also another detox because I feel I, have, I still have stuff <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm doing that. Uh, so if you want, I can share with you the the, the protocol that is it's really very good. It's, it's, it's very effective. Um, that is that is all about one thing about the the food intake very interesting okay guys so we have been on air for about 40 minutes you are welcome to if you have any questions just unmute yourself and ask directly so if you don't then i will continue with mine so guys feel free yes. we are one family you know just unmute yourself and ask your questions hello Hello, Soledad. Hello. Can you yeah. see me now? Hello, yes, this is Christian. Soy Chris de desde Colombia, Hello, Soledad, ¿cómo estás? Hi, ¿cómo Hello. estás? ¿Todo bien? Bien, bien, ¿no? afortunadamente. Oye, very interesting your, your, your sharing. I, I love all you have said already, and I like it very much, and what you have done, the process you have followed. I, I'm very interested in the liquid liquidarian path. Uh, personally, I'm a pretarian already, but I I once in a while I drink and I once in a while I eat, you know. But I'm very interested in in how do you get the to establish on the liquidarian path uh, after a while without needing to go back to solids. If I make any sense of my question i'd like to know how do you handle that how do you avoid coming back to to the solids that's kind of my question thank you um i don't have any i really don't have any cravings for solid food anymore mm -hmm. um because because of this because of uh, at the beginning that's why i I prefer that all goes in a flow and it's all a process. No one is rushing us. No one is rushing us. There is no competition. And the change it doesn't have to be from one day to the other. So I think that uh, obviously from time to time when my mood, and this comes from my from the mind, when when my mood is a little bit like, oh, oh suddenly I crave something and I was like, come on, this is not myself. You know, this is not me. That is something that we can talk about, the mindset that is very interesting uh, to approach. You being Britarian, you know about this. It's all, all is the mindset. Uh, 
all is the mind. The mind, yeah, so, right, but, yeah. Yeah, but I think that uh, what happened to me is like, as I go back and forward with the liquid, no liquid, liquid, trying a little bit, uh, every time that I'm going back to a solid, as, as I said before, I think I said it, I, I can't remember, every time I go going back to a solid, even if I, that solid was a very simple three ingredients, raw salad, tiny, or maybe a thick smoothie, or maybe I was, uh, I, I used to do like a, a kind of, um, I don't know, my inventions, like a kind of um, dessert with the nuts, blending nuts and like a mousse mm -hmm. and it comes like a like a type of mousse texture and it wasn't it's mm -hmm. obviously it's not liquid but it's not solid it's not something crunchy yeah. a mousse texture whatever it was really very very heavy very very heavy mm -hmm. and to be honest chris i was eating with pleasure eh? i was choosing to eat because this this is something that we have to understand we need to choose with our free, free will what we want to do and when I choose to eat or to drink something, it's because I really want it. Otherwise, I rather I prefer not to do it. I, I yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I'm also very with dry fasting. I don't care. I, I, I know I can go days with dry, but I was eating with, with really with. Hey, this is a good dessert. This is a really nice salad. But then my body was telling me this is heavy for me. This is heavy. That's what, and and then after that I was feeling very heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling again the sensation. I don't know if you had it, of things moving in my intestines or in my <laughs> stomach. And I was like, what is this? Okay. I'm still having these parasites that are talking to me. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> coming back to the liquid. Coming back to the yeah. really because. <laughs> so that's why I don't. I have my cravings and my binging from time to time when, because when my mood is down, but mindset, controlling my mind. And it's very, it's very easy really to, to not, uh, yeah, not going back from now to solid. I don't know what is going to happen really to me, but mm -hmm. I have, I have in my mind also the breatarian path, but I'm All not right. rushing myself. I'm not rushing myself. Okay. and. I don't know if I answer your question. If that the uh, yes, yes, you did. Thank you so much. And I have some more comments on it. It's because I am very interested in this. I find this this really interesting. Is that uh, there are different kind of liquids, you know, denser mm -hmm. liquids, lighter liquids. Do you think that the path leads to going from denser to lighter? Or it happens all at once, or is there a process you think you you foresee on the liquidarian path? To be honest, I don't know. I can I, I can speak for myself and for me. Uh, it makes sense to go lighter, 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 oh, lighter. Right. It mm -hmm. makes sense, but it's because I know myself. I know the way my body is and my mind is also. And I prefer to do those type of transitions. Uh, mm -hmm. So of course, yes, it's like you said. Um, also, when you are choosing, is is really very different to have a mono shoes of uh, orange that to have a um, shoes that you mix celery with this and with that and with carrot that is more heavy and cabbage that is more heavy and ha and still have have a, a bit of starch. You know, so yeah, of course, uh, I feel okay. the different. I feel the different in my liquid uh, diet now from one shoes to the other shoes. And I feel how okay. one shoes now is more heavy than the other one. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and also it's Same. not about also the density or not density. It's about also the type of energy that gives you. Oh, so, oh, maybe this type of shoes is better for the morning for me or, or better or, or better mm -hmm. once a week. And I can right. have this one every day. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, for okay. me, it's, it's becoming lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Lighter, okay. And actually, you, you have become aware of the differences between the liquids, right? Mm. Yeah. 
Very yeah. great. And I just one last thing, if I may, Eric, dear Eric, Absolutely. is that feel free. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's just that there is a myth, a myth about liquidarium. That myth, I don't know, I have heard about it. It's about the, the teeth. That since oh. the teeth are not chewing anymore, they tend to fall. Is that true? What do you think about this? If that's true, is there something we can do about it? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's like a myth I have heard about. It. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think it doesn't happen to me. <laughs> All right. Why did that happen? All right. No, to be honest, I really don't know. I really don't know. I don't have any issue with uh, uh, teeth, really. Um, okay. What I, what I, what I really, so I don't know. I don't know how uh, about that. I don't know anyone that has any issues or, or has just any experience okay. with that. Uh, what mm -hmm. I really believe is that we don't have to brush our teeth. Well, it depends of, I don't need, I don't need it really. We don't have to brush our teeth very hard. Oh, we right. just really need, because also another topic was going to talk about minimalism. We really don't need to brush our teeth super hard. With, we need just, I use just a, a small bamboo uh, brush that I have mm -hmm. and I brush my teeth very light. I made myself my own toothpaste that oh. if you oh. also want, I have the recipe, very simple ingredients, simple to buy and you are not buying the fluor and, and the, and even the natural toothpaste that are there in the market are, are really very expensive and it's very easy to do your tooth. And that, and also it's very, it's more natural for the teeth. So I really don't have, for now, any issue with uh, with that, uh, Chris. All right, thank you, thank you, Soledad. Muchas gracias. No Por ahí seguiremos hablando. Ay, Ay. Yes. Thank you. You have to yes. talk to talk to me then in Spanish by the private. Send me a private message. And we yes. talk in Spanish. Sure, no, I'll, I'll I want, message you. I want to know about. I want. I want to know about your path. I want to. Know All right, about your yeah, path. Definitely. Yeah. definitely, definitely. But actually, Soledad. I want to disclose something. We are planning a webinar, a special webinar with Chris, a few weeks from now, where he's going to talk about his path. So oh, I'm... nice. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to be there asking <laughs> sure. him some questions. Nice, Chris. Yeah. Uh, esperaré, esperaré verte por allá, Soledad. Gracias. Perfect. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I just imagine Chris, Chris is a lawyer, so he combines his work as a lawyer with his pranic lifestyle. It's really, really special. Wow. So... Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, yes, yeah. So look, look forward Thank to it. Yes. I look forward to it. I haven't left. Chris. Definitely, I haven't left my business, um, busy life, hectic life as a lawyer, but I became a pranic. I became pranic years ago, so I have learned to kind of handle that. So I will share that about about it. Yeah, yeah. I really look forward Amazing. to Amazing. having you there, Chris. Yeah, interviewing <laughs> you. Okay, guys. So, do you? So, uh, we have one question in the chat from Ru. Ru, do you wanna mute yourself and ask uh, and ask it, or would you like me to read it? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, hi. Uh, so I just want. Uh, thank you. I yeah. I just wondered about the um urine flush. Um, I, I think you said something about um, no longer desiring to do the salt flush and that you prefer to do urine flush. So I just wondered what that looked like. I've never heard of that before. So I just wondered if you could elaborate on that. Thank you. No worries, Ra. Ra, I think, no? Yeah. Um, yeah, the urine fl flush, very simple. Really very simple. Um, the difference is that um, um, you can use fresh urine, you can use uh, evolved, I, I love to say evolved urine or aged urine. Of course, if you are into urine therapy, you know that the bulb urine depends on how, uh, yeah, how much months or years, it will be maybe like uh, more difficult to take, but you, can do you can mix fresh urine with evolved urine it's up to you but 
the the um, procedure the to do this is just very it's very simple. You need to drink at least one liter. Uh, preferably is one liter and a half, two liters if you can, but you don't have to force yourself really to drink too much. Uh, and you drink it super fast. The 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 quantity that you have very very fast. Uh, if you can warm it up, better. A warm it obviously um just warm it no 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 not hot uh, because otherwise it also you, you cannot um, put in the fire the urine uh, and put it too hot but you drink it warm and just straight away and then I practice some asanas because there is something that I like to do uh, but you don't need to. And that that is that is much the the urine urine flash. Sorry, uh, you have to drink that very very fast. And I have a bowel movement after that, um, in one hour or less sometimes. Or sometimes, really, once it happened to me that I didn't have any bowel movement that day. It's okay. I was feeling obviously a little bit bloated. It's logic but then you after one hour you feel normal you pee again normal but that that urine is working inside you so don't worry about it it will come eventually uh, if that if it doesn't come uh, you can try it again the same day later or you can try it the other day i prefer to do it in the morning with empty stomach if i'm planning to do it and for example that morning that I did it and I nothing happened. I repeat the same process the next morning, and I could have the bowel movement, and it was super clean. So I recommend that, really. And um, the only the so the flash that I uh, do nowadays is only with my urine. That's really fascinating. I I, I just wondered with a salt flush, it's really. Um, it's quite easy to it's it's obvious to identify the sugar that that triggers the bowel movement. Um, but with the salt, is it is it then the salt levels in the urine or um, what is it that triggers the bowel movement with urine? To be honest, Ro, I don't know. I don't mm. have the scientific answer for that really mm -hmm. I did it because one friend of mine that also has a lot of experience with urine therapy recommend me to do it I trust in him and I, I and also resonate with me so and it's my urine it, it's not going to harm me so mm -hmm. I just did it and it works and it I feel awesome after that awesome I totally recommend it but I really really I it's I is yeah um, now I feel curious in knowing really from a more technical perspective or like scientific and a perspective how this work inside us no uh, so I really don't know how to answer that um, but no, it's I, okay. recommend it. um, <laughs> I recommend it I think a liter and a half is quite a lot so do you accumulate that amount do you like kind of over time because yeah I don't know if that ah, makes sense <laughs> do you like save that time? amount up yeah yeah like do you put that amount oh, aside and then in, in yeah, like to save for that flush it's not going to be the fresh urine that you just pee because obviously you, you never pee in the morning one liter or one liter and a half but if you if it will be maybe hard to drink all age urine. So maybe you accumulate the day before, if you are planning to do a urine flush, a couple of days before the urine. So you already have more than one liter if you accumulate, mm -hmm. at, 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 I think, at, at least I'm in a liquid diet, so I'm pee a lot. So I accumulate a, a pee a, a lot per day, but you accumulate the, the day before, so you will have your liter of pee to drink it in the morning if you want. And it will be fresh fresh pee anyway. Thank you so much for explaining that. 
Um, thank you. No worries. No worries. Okay, then Kelly. Well, Kelly, she she's gonna be the next. Kelly, it's your turn. Hello, so good to see you all. Um, Hi. I'm really enjoying your sharing about your your journey, and I have uh, two questions. One's perhaps shorter, and the other is a bit longer. But um, with your, did you find with your um, do you find there's a tr transition with blood sugar balance and shifting from fruit juices to water, urine, and dry fasting? Um, I don't know. To be honest, like um, the other question that Ro was asking me about PLM, um, these scientific questions, I do all my intuition. And I don't think it changed a lot my my sugar levels okay. uh, because I don't feel any any change in my energy really or yeah so okay. so I don't I don't know I don't know how to answer that question sorry Kelly oh no yeah. all good I I was thinking about it recently um because some people enjoy fruit juices or diluted fruit juices versus other people seem to enjoy uh, cucumber juices. And I've been noticing in my shift, um, if I don't dilute the fruit juices, I can be a little, <laughs> a little off balance. Um, but the yeah. cucumber juice has a different effect for me. So I'm I'm just noticing th these things intuitively. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I always follow my intuition. Yeah, you are right. I feel different with different type of shoes. Like I was telling to Chris, that's why sometimes I know, for example, that I can drink it's, it's, it, it will be citrus season very soon. So I'm going to bring shoes in oranges that I really love to just have orange shoes. And orange shoes is something, for example, that is very nice and light for me and gives me gives me a, a balanced energy. It doesn't give me the energy like I'm like high, you know what I mean? So I'm, I maybe, yeah, I'm maybe I, I understand the different, but I, I, don't, I don't think in sugar levels. That's, that's why I cannot answer the question with the sugar level. I don't really mm. know what is going on with the sugar levels, really. Inside me, I don't care. <laughs> I, I really don't. I really don't know. I, I yeah, I don't know. I, I, I can tell from my emotions, maybe, or the way my body feels with different type of shoes, yeah. But in my opinion, for example, the green shoes are the ones that hit me more, not the fruit shoes. Okay. I don't know why. No, and I love that too, because I feel like even the languaging I'm trying to use is kind of borrowed from science, but it doesn't, it, it feels like a, a sweater I'm borrowing just for the moment um, <laughs> before I can kind of put words to my own experience. Um, so mm -hmm. I love that you've shared that too. Um, and then this actually is a great segue into a deep resonance with your sharing about shifting from like lighter density and higher vibrational or shifting to lighter density and higher vibrational foods and liquids. Um, so I don't know if you could comment a bit more about that, especially in relation to what you said about food binging and desire to do that when you notice your mood is low and you're dealing with lower vibrational energies. Because I feel like that's one of the things I'm confronting now that part of the emotional and energetic experience, knowing it's not about the food, but there is still this aspect that I'm needing to confront in my progression. Mm -hmm. So your question is how you can use the the diet to to help you with this binging of other food or um, more about if you could share your experience and noticing. Um, the emotional side and what helped you in being able to transition out of patterns of say binging and going back to foods when realizing they didn't feel good. Um, ah, okay. yeah. If that's mm -hmm. any clearer. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I will try to, to answer it the way I, I, I feel. Yeah, yeah, but I, but I understand your question really. Okay. I don't know if I if I'm going to be in in, in with, with your perception of, of answering, I don't know. Uh, but um, okay. um, how can I? Um, I work a lot in my mindset all the time because uh, our mind is hackable. 
you know. Uh, so we need to work in our mind and to have I I like to call mental fasting sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sot selection, sot control. Yeah. Uh, like you, we select the diet, we select our thoughts, and we control our thoughts. Um, so yeah, mastering my mind is very important. And when obviously with a lighter diet, you you clean your you can clean your mind also more easily because you clean your body. So you your your thoughts are more clear because you are becoming more connected with yourself. Uh, so yeah, for me it's like um, how can I explain the um the meditation helped me a, a lot and or, or also uh, being in, in the present moment helped me a lot to understand when uh, my emotions are coming from me or from someone else that is outside me or from a limit belief that come from the society a negative programming and all paradigm that is, is still there trying to know to get inside the mon my monkey mind and talk trying to talk to me bullshit. <laughs> I can't say that <laughs> in the YouTube. Sorry. Um uh, but yeah the uh, when you when you start practicing this connection with yourself you also um understand and and try also to observe yourself in the, I, I call it the observer of the observer. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you observe yourself outside yourself. Uh, with that, you first of all you have more perspective of what is going on there with your emotions or with that food that you are being, being you are craving or whatever. Gives you neutrality to 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 see the whole picture and to see okay this is what is going on this is what is happening. And so you have more discern discernment to know uh, when it's really that you are hung hungry about that is it's never about the hunger mm -hmm. <laughs> because we eat with emotions all mm -hmm. the time all the time with with emotions it, it's it's like like this um, um so I do that kind of exercise the to be the observer of the observer the observer of myself uh, and to have to be in that neut neutrality position and i can solve any challenge or problem if you want to say problem i like to say challenge uh, from that perspective and from that perspective i can understand uh, when is myself talking to myself or when it's something else that I have to just shut out because uh, it's never important. <laughs> it's not part of me. Uh, no one is going to decide for, uh, uh, for me. I'm mm -hmm. deciding for myself. What am I doing with my life, with my food intake or whatever I'm doing. I'm in total control of myself. Uh, I'm, I'm, we have to use our free will 100% with total awareness all the time. And when you are able to do that, uh, you will understand very easy uh, when these emotions and thoughts come of craving food, if it's really you or not. And sometimes it might be really you, or you, or you know what? Sometimes you might understand that you have a bad mo day uh, for whatever reason and you want to eat something or whatever you know what i don't know and sometimes did that okay i know it's a bad day uh, not now with the but even with the liquids for example i know it's a bad day or i i i think i'm going to have another shoes and maybe yeah and maybe it's just having one shoes more mm -hmm. that is not the problem uh, if you are enjoying it that go for it and then after that you f you finish that to, to ensure that and then you come back to your path in the it's not a big deal really if you don't 
harm yourself or you don't do something that you I don't know you are doing days of dry and you suddenly eat that no of course not but we uh, yeah if you, you you will know really if I don't know we don't ha we have to be more gentle with ourselves sometimes you really that's why sometimes you have the awareness that oh, okay this was a bad day I was either okay I'm going to have this and if you really enjoy you go for it enjoy it with all your with all the senses with all the senses also the mindset around food whenever, whatever type of food you are you are having it has to be a celebration it has to be mm -hmm. a ceremony you have to bless the food you have to take the time to prepare the food if you have to prepare the shoes or prepare the whatever food bless it feeling grateful that you have that to enjoy and enjoy it with all the senses take your time you know uh, so that's why also you the guilty about eating or not eating no you don't have to feel guilty um I don't know. I don't know if that answers answer your question. No, it does. Oh God, I start talking about it. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That I, actually I, answers. Go ahead. No, my nature exactly is this. I start to talk about one thing and I finish talking about yeah. it. I'm sorry, Kelly. I'm sorry. No, not at all. That You actually answered another question that was coming up in my mind oh, about okay. um engaging with you know physicality foods and juices being one of them um in an intentional way to help us better navigate reality and the densities so i've been finding that sometimes i crave a denser juice like a a cherry juice versus another juice like a melon juice um when I know that I'm going to be engaging with people who have denser energies and it kind of gives me like extra bit of, I don't know, energetic shielding in a way that I can play with versus just feeling like I have to mentally shield, which I kind of still have some resonance to as an intuitive empath. So I'm seeing kind of, I have this connection perhaps with food and plants in the way that other people, like you commented before with um, mm -hmm. animal communication. And mm -hmm. perhaps we all have this in our own unique ways and it probably evolves too. I can see, of you course. know, level oh, four breath areas. Oh. Pardon? Yeah, sorry. Oh, well, sorry. I was just thinking like, you know, perhaps level four people who've stabilized in level four and onward don't even need to utilize that maybe because they're stable where they're at versus other people um, need to work in denser energies. Because I know some people who can literally eat whatever they want and they are profound energy healers, the, um, the types of energies that they can move um, so it's fascinating. And that's what I love about this group, Eric, because there's so many people coming together with different perspectives and experiences and we can all share from each other. So um, that's the idea. You. You've got it. That's, that's the idea. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, guys, Revit also, you um, want to ask something? Yeah, I was just, I was just wondering, uh, maybe a more technical question. Um, what, when do you uh, get to the point where you're uh, completely detox? Is, is there such a point where you're um, hydrated and detox? Because we're also full of toxicity and uh, dehydrated and constipated. Even if I, you know, I don't, I, I'm feeling okay, but, you know, I've got some tests that I've done and they're not, the results are not so good. And, you know, maybe uh, some, disease is going to show up all of a sudden so you know so you just you're just on this journey and uh you're still you know how many years uh, uh do you think you're you've gotten to that stage i mean how, how many years have you been on this uh path and do you feel any difference do you feel you're more do you feel anything when you're hydrated and you're not dehydrated you're you're clean you're detoxed hmm. Just... hello Revita. <laughs> <laughs> first, first of all um look um uh, i'm i don't i'm not really worried about yeah how how can i say this obviously we are all different obviously we are all different what i feel is like is is i i'm there is no way I'm coming back 
to anything that I was doing in the past. There is no way. What I'm doing, I know, is always in a, uh, it's always a path of learning and learning more and more every day. I cannot erase what I did and I, or I cannot go, it's like, it's everything that I'm doing is for my best, even when, um, if I, I don't know, if, if, if I, when I, I crave food or when I, I'm in a low mood or it's a day that I can learn from that. And so I have that mindset all, all the time. And, uh, um, and I'm not really counting days or years in my perspective because, um, because yes, I'm just trying to enjoy my, the present moment all the time. Um, otherwise, it, to be honest, when I when I used to count days, maybe when I was young or or, or thinking in the future as something, or since thinking in something to achieve or thinking. I always used to have problems with my anxiety and sometimes with depression. Um, so I understand, I switch that and I and I, I understand now that if I'm focusing my present moment, even obviously, I'm not saying sometimes I organize these seven days with with bitter hours for bowel movement because I feel oh I'm going to do a, this for my bowel movement <laughs> and I did myself a protocol for myself. Okay, these seven days I'm going to do this, so I'm doing this. So I'm I I have a little bit of organization. I'm not saying I'm saying that, but this when when we think about years and how many years it's going to take me to go to do this, in my personal opinion, um, that is not going to help me if I think like that, uh, because like I said. In my past, it, 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 I used to have anxiety a lot of, oh, it has to be now, it has to be now, uh, thinking. Look, look, this is from my past, eh? Oh, I'm, I'm too old to do this. <laughs> no. <laughs> or, or it's too late to do this. What? No. What was that? Thought? No, 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 no. No. It's never late. We are never, no. We are eternal also. No, 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 no worries at all. I, I don't know, obviously, your, your, um, what is going on with you with the test. Obviously, we, I, I don't really know. Uh, but it's just you have to just trust, trust in yourself, and um, trust in your body. Try to, try to give time, uh, give um, space and time for yourself, with yourself, to yourself, to. To experience what I what what I think I read in somewhere uh, the sound of your silence. I think the sound of your silence is when you connect with your with your inner guy, and you start receiving the message from your inner guy. It's go. It's going to be all fine. Nothing to be worried about it. And if there is something, some challenge health challenge that maybe you have to face, you will face it in the best way as possible, uh, whatever you have to face, and you will know what to do about it. Uh, but, but, but even that, think in the present, what I can do today with this, and every day, what I can do today with this, what I can do today with this, you know? Don't think, you know, how many years I, it's going to take me to do this. Forget about the years. You're going to have, and even if you are worried about the years, you're going to have plenty of years ahead anyway. You know what I mean? So just, yeah, no, there's, there's no going back. You always learn, and I see improvements. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying, and also uh, relatively, it's all relative. I mean, consider... In, in comparison to other people, I see the differences. And, uh, you know, but uh, I've got osteoporosis. I feel great. But then it's, I, I know it's a matter of acidity. It's because of acidity and, and, the, and uh, the, the, the body's taking the calcium from the bones. So uh, 
yeah, I feel great, but you know, and and also I know uh, I also um, I I also had other problems which went away. I was more uh, anxious. Yeah, I I felt I feel my mind is much clearer now. Of course, I see I see the benefits, and but it seems like it never ends. Like there's always because we are bombarded with toxicity all the time. Even if we detox. We keep, uh, and, and we're doing our best to still. So it seems like, you know, in this world, maybe it's not possible to be 100% uh, clean and hydrated because we're, there's so many, so many toxins and it's, it's unnatural. It's unnatural the way we're living and everything. So, and also, okay. the, mm -hmm. also there's no, no one. Also, there's no one to ask. I mean, we, we are sort of reinventing the wheel. Uh, we are sort of uh, rediscovering all the this wisdom and all these, uh, you know, the, these secrets, which, I mean, they were there all the time. It's not like we, we invented it, but it, they're hid, hidden. So, no, I'm not complaining about, you know, there's no one to ask. You can't go to the doctor and they, they don't even know what you're a few levels above them and they think you're you're stupid or you're, you're crazy and yeah yeah forget about them really but uh, yeah i mean but you have to um yeah uh, the word that this ster I, I i will say external forces to put it in those terms because otherwise we we can talk ages about this and it fascinated me really yeah, <laughs> Me but too. let's call it these external forces. Uh, we know that what they want. We know what they want. But um, to be honest, it's really, really about vibration. It's really about vibration. It's really you, your cho cho uh, choice to tune yourself to the right vibration. When you are in the right vibration, no matter what they do, you became invisible to them. It's like that. It's really like that. It's how this uh, war works. It's natural. It's, it's about also natural law. It's how this reality works with the vibration. You became invisible. You don't really have to be worried about it. And then you you ha you have your protection that yours you you uh, yourself made it with your vibration and then everything that comes to you it will be positive for you it will be a, a learning it will be um the information that you will have to receive at the, that precise moment because uh, the energy available nowadays is for us to do this type of work, this cleaning our mind, correct mindset, cleaning our body in different ways, because there is a lot of ways to clean our body. There is a lot of detox, there is a lot. You have to do whatever you feel you need to do for yourself in regards to cleaning, because I think we have to empty ourselves in order to give a space for new things to come to our life. And also in order to give a space for the connection, for have a clear channel between us and ourselves without any interference from the outside, because otherwise we are function with programs that are not us. We are function, we, if, if, we, if we don't have the correct mindset, someone is going to think for, uh, from us. You know what I mean? Is our pers if our pers perspective perspective is controlled by these external forces, what we are going to manifest is not going to come from us. It's going to come from somewhere else that is not us. And we are going to end, end it living a life that doesn't belong to us. That, that is what is very important, the mindset. But And yeah, who is thinking through you? Who is talking through you? Uh, we we have to recover our free will, and when we do, do this, that is really pretty simple. It's really simple, really simple. And um, when we do this, we can just 
have this protection that I told you with the external force, they are, they are not going to bother, bother us anymore. We are going to build another world in all, also in this, in this, in this plane, but with another vibration. We are going to become invisible. I truly believe in this. And uh, revital something important that in the process we need to connect with our inner child. Remember that our inner child is there, is here with us. Because what happened with we connect with our inner child? Another another way to became in the present moment all the time. When whatever I'm doing, I'm in the present moment. I'm here talking to you. I'm here talking to you. I'm not thinking of something else. And when when you were talking to me, I was listening to you. I was doing anything else. I'm in the present moment. So yeah, connect with our this inner child also is going to allow us to know judgment. So we don't we stop judging each other. What's the point? Please and stop judging others. And also it connects us with the present moment with being a with the creativity of a child. When we were child, we were in the present moment playing, and we played. That's why I mean that that is something that is what I I wanted to say. We need to we we came here to play and to enjoy life. Our nature our nature is joy, happiness, love. That is the natural state. We don't have to forget that joy, happiness, love for ourselves first and then from the external world, from other beings. And I, I was, uh, the other day I was thinking, uh, they say to us that it's natural, that yeah, it's natural for survival. And also this survival scene doesn't make any sense to me. Why we have to survive? You know what I mean? And this in, in, in mode of flight and fight, I was thinking the other day. They say it's natural, ah, yeah, in the beginnings, when we were surviving there because uh, the, 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 I don't know, the lions want to kill us and the, whatever, I cannot remember, the mammoths and the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, and we develop this fly or flight mood as a survival mood. That doesn't make any sense to me. That is not natural. That is a mood that put us into a stress mood and that uh, is not a balanced state for us. It's not natural. And that allow us to, to feel fear. And the fear is something that these external forces want us to feel. So no fear at all. Everything that happens to us is, is not an issue. It's not a problem. It's a challenge that we have to go through to become stronger. And if you want, and if you have the warrior uh, spirit that I have, uh, sometimes I'm like, okay, this motherfucker, okay, you want, you want, I go into, I, I go into to do my part, you know what I mean? I, and you want to, 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 to do this to us? Okay, I became stronger and stronger and stronger every day. You know what I mean? Better for me, better for me. Another excuse to, to, to become better and better as human being every day, you know? So that's why we need to take that things like that. And then eventually they're going to stop bothering us. It's, 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 it's falling down, it's falling apart. They're going, they're failing. Uh, we don't have to really do too much about them because they already are, the destiny is for, for them it's already written. We have to just be focusing ourselves, you know? And I don't know what, what is going on with you, Revital, and I wish you the best with this, but it will be fine. It will be fine. Just focus on this and alternative in, in this osteoporosis, how you can, you can, a natural way to, I don't know really too much about it, so I cannot give you an advice because I don't have experience with that, or I don't have anyone else near me that have experience with that, but you will be fine. You will be fine. And you have the group also too. So. Thank you. I don't Thank know you. if I answered the question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish everyone were like you. And, and thank you for being so uh, 
you know, honest and, and sharing everything. And uh, no we have Thank to be, yeah, we have to be, um, you know, open to everyone and, and honest. And so thank you. Absolutely. No absolutely. Okay, thank guys. You. So thank do you have any more questions? If, if you could share the uh, two space you said you're making and the herb herbal detox, if you could share the uh, recipes, the protocols, the yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, th I was thinking so that maybe uh, after we release this video, after it's being uploaded on YouTube, you can just post in the group. You know, uh, can just post in the group all the you know addi what? additional details. Because, because uh, may, many more people will watch it, so they will understand what you are talking about, and then you can supply the different things. Yeah, we'll post it later yeah, yeah, yeah. on. Of course, yeah. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. Okay, guys, do you have any more Thank any more questions so for for your answer? Thank you, Revital. <laughs> it was a pleasure to talk with you, Revital, because I I watch a lot of the videos, and you are always there participating. It's lovely. I love you from moment zero. Really, Revital always there asking questions. You are you are so kind, Revital. Really, really. Thank you so so I much. You. Take care. I agree. Thank you. Very much um, Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. Do you have any more questions? Okay. Okay. So um. It's been about an hour and a half. I will just ask you a few more questions about minimalism. And when and then, you know, it's also interesting talking to you. So I was thinking maybe we can schedule again, you know, one, two months from now. Have another part of this conversation. <laughs> if, we can, if, we can, if we can have this conversation more informal, that I'm more, like, uh, comfortable, you know, when I yeah. just talk about... <laughs> sure yeah but yeah we we'll do it the way the way me, that is the important we yeah. just have to be ourselves yeah yeah absolutely so we can definitely talk about that now i, I would like to switch because uh, uh, it was advertised as the subject of minimalism like liquidarian liquidarianism which we covered at least up to some extent and minimalism now mm -hmm. for people who are not familiar what, what's this term? What does it mean, minimalism, if someone is minimalist? What's the philosophy of it? Uh, I can say the typical uh, phrase so that comes to my mind is just we already, less is more. Maybe I can say that. Um, mm -hmm. a, a more clear and deep um, connection with ourselves, like we were talking, and, and a more clear and deep connection also with the reality that surrounds us um, comes with a more simple life. It comes mm. with simplicity, the, the beauty of the simplicity, in my opinion, and, and natural habits for, for, yeah, for, a, for a simple living, because when you understand the natural law also, uh, that I think is the only law that we should follow and and, and live according to because even if we in, if you don't understand and you are you are not aware of natural law natural natural laws are there and are the laws that explain how this reality this naturally not the artificial reality that uh, they want to build uh, in parallel to this one i'm talking about the origins no the the, the origins of 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 the of of living in this reality in my opinion, uh, that also lead us the minimalism. Uh, from my per perspective, lead us to um, feel more liberated. We feel more free because we need less. We are deattach. We deattach ourselves from the desires, um, uh, and yes, yeah, and from the need of something outside us. But mm. the interesting thing, in my opinion, is when you realize that you, and also you realize this through food about fasting and different fasting, when you realize that you don't need anything from outside yourself, you became aware of, of that. So you have your free will to then, after that, choose with all your conscience uh, how you want to interact with yourself and with the external world. So your choices then 
are going to start to become more in tune with yourself really and it, it usually it turns in, in uh, these choices turns to to become more natural mm -hmm. more simple it's just the way I, I i at least it's just the way i i, I live it i live yeah so, yeah um, hmm. so, so, so yeah, what... and also, sorry eric yeah yeah, so would you say that uh, minimalism is the philosophy of being satisfied with the minimal amount of stuff that you own? Yeah, and, and not only the amount of the stuff, it's, it's not only quant quantity, but but yeah, 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 in, in a general meaning is that, and also became sovereign and self-sufficient being, and that's allow, allow us to Unleashes from con consume cons I don't know the consumerism. Consumerism, consumerism. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and an artificial and this artificial society that uh, um for example one of the also that these things come also with the fasting that mm -hmm. I really think I don't need to my I don't I don't use for example any cream nothing on my skin I don't need it I just uh, wash myself with because I don't smell i don't smell bad really even if i'm still detox doing detox still because when we were talking with revital about this not only also we receive some kind of in the environment things uh, uh, sometimes and it's okay but even i don't i, I don't sweat too much uh, too much uh, like in the past i don't have any issue with any bad smell so I don't really feel that I didn't need anything on my skin. What um, it's very important uh, what you put on the skin. Very very important. Uh, when when also you start um, with this doing dry fasting, especially dry fasting that you 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 really need the, the skin to breathe because it will become your the breathing through your nose and the breathing from your skin it will become very important in a dry fast or in a vegetarian, like, or in whatever, even if you're eating. Um, so, so yeah, I don't use any products. Uh, the toothpaste that I have this very recipe that I'm going to share with the, with the group. Uh, when I want to use some products, because I really, because it's, I really choose to have it because I like from time to time, maybe once in a month and put a hair toner like this, a splash, something on my, uh, to, because I like the smell, I um, made this uh, for myself with um, medicinal plants and herbal plants, like making infusion that I can also, Revital can, or the ones that are interesting, I can uh, share all the recipes, super simple to do. Uh, and then, for example, I don't use any shampoo, I, I just use my urine in my hair. But uh, I'm water sometimes when I wet my hair, and I love my hair. It's growing fine. I don't have any issues. I just really love it. I just let it be. You know, I, I brush. Uh, I I like um, I like to brush my hair from time to time. I feel like also brushing the skin with a. I have a Tampico brush that is nice, that it lasts forever, forever and ever. You buy one, and it lasts you forever. I don't use any plastic or, or things like that. Um, I also sleep in a very sick, sick, sick is, yeah, sick in English, like. Thin, I think, thin, you mean thin, no? Thin, thin, thin so mm -hmm. thin. I always confuse that word. Thin, mm -hmm. uh, like kind of foam, a uh, bamboo foam, very thin. I don't need any mattress. I don't like it. I'm not used to. And also it's good for the body to stand up from the floor. And also connects connects you with the ground. It's grounded. Uh, it's good you use all the body to stand up instead of using the the mattress and all the stuff. I I don't use that anymore. Um, another alternative, if you don't want to use urine, is the uh, bicarb soda with water. Just that. I never use it because I really am happy with my urine. But I know I have some friends that only wash the hair once a week or once every 10 days just with the bicarb with the water and they are fine with that. 
obviously at the beginning it might have need a, a process of a, an adaptation like everything but if you are a um, patient you will have good results in some days and then you can continue with the by uh, carb or the urine and it will mm. be fine um, very very interesting but, now so that in your case was it a conscious choice to become a minimalist or it came to you naturally as you moved along your dietary choices and your spiritual development, etc.? Naturally, naturally. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, and I, I, I wanted to ask you, in your opinion or from your, from your experience, when a person adopts this kind of minimalistic lifestyle, what happens to their mind in terms of, in terms of their mind, their thinking, their consciousness? Um, also became more minimalist. <laughs> no, I think it became more clear, more um, balanced, I can say. Um, mm. uh, yeah, yeah, because you understand you are complete the way you, you are. So it's like I say, you are, you, your relationships with other people became better mm. because the understanding of, of not being attached to anything external, even if it is a cream or mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, it also helps you in the in the in the way you relate with other people. Mm, and interesting. You, understand, you know, you became more like uh, you don't have come and goings. All is became natural. All is like you just uh, add. Uh, I don't know, you live the life that you really come, uh, came to live. Okay. Um, you know, when you mm -hmm. think in more simple ways. Right, you know, right, you know. right. And uh, so that, have you ever found yourself getting greed, you know, in, in English they say decluttering, yeah, to declutter, to get rid of stuff, bringing stuff out from your space? I don't know, bringing stuff. I mean, uh, no, uh, uh, get, getting rid of stuff. For example, you had too many clothes or too many other things, and then now you want to clear your space, you know, as a part of your minimalistic journey to get rid of old oh. clothes and stuff. It's called to declutter, yeah? To get rid of stuff. Oh, yeah, the objects, you mean? Hmm? Objects that I might have or... Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Yes, yes. I don't have too much clothes. Yeah, I uh, yeah yeah yeah. Of course, I I I do from and I do. I still do um, from time to time some cleaning of my space. Uh, and yes, uh, I have my corners in the house that I, that I'm living as pretty new this this place. But it's really super simple, super simple decoration, simple stuff. Uh, a different is that. Everything that I chose, it has a meaning for me. It has a meaning. It's there for a purpose. It's there on the wall for a purpose. For example, this is there for a, this, the four of, of some animals. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, I don't know if I, you could see it. Yeah, the yeah. Four of, of some animals. Um, uh, all is from, from, uh, yeah, all the options that I are that I choose is for uh, ha have a meaning. Okay. Uh, in my life, uh, and I all all the time also trying trying to exchange all the time um, options with other people. I think it's it's good also to, uh, and also because I don't like to use too much money. Yeah. Uh, so I I I try try even if I'm still using money really. Uh, but I try to more have more an exchange of okay, I have this that I don't, I'm not using anymore, and it's still working or whatever. And I I know someone else can can use it for me, perfect. Or I give it, I give that as a gift. Or I if that person have something that I'm I'm interested in, I exchange it. I do like a trade, you know. You say trade, yeah, you know? trade, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. I do that all the time, and I think it has a lot of value. And 
and also it's super nice. It's super nice. Uh, I don't know. I, it has a very nice feeling in, in myself that someone else is using something that I'm I don't I'm not using anymore, and right. I give that with, with love, with energy, with with a good energy, you know. And I receive Amazing. the other thing with good energy, and and all words is a whole recycle cycle that is nice to do. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so. I have pretty much my last question for today. If you, uh, in case you work with a person and they feel that they are, that their space is, there, there's too, too much stuff there. Yeah. But they don't know where to start with, to get, getting rid of everything. So what would you advise this particular person? When you say stuff, you are talking. Uh, yeah. If a person wants to leave, um, if a person, um, Mm, has this idea of more minimalistic living mm -hmm. and they have okay. too much stuff at their space, too many clothes, too much other stuff. Uh, so you are talking about physical objects, not... Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, mental, about physical mental, objects. Yeah, because, because at some point it comes to the physical action of getting rid of your stuff, at least for most of the people. Now, yeah. do, would, do you have any suggestions in this realm and about this subject? Um, I don't know. For me, it comes very. It came very natural to see. Okay, I'm not. I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. I know, like, very easy. And then I started to do like some, yeah, stray with some people or whatever. For me, it's just okay. Um, because someone yeah can be feel overwhelming with a lot of stuff. I yes. know that in general that's, the people have a lot of accumulate a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah that's I that's ex that. that's exactly the situation um about which I'm asking because at some point it might be it might become a real barrier for a person if they uh, want to okay, if, yeah. if they want to develop in terms of their spirituality or in terms of improving their diet even, you know? It might because the space is too dense, too cluttered. Yeah. So, um, I got it. Mm. Yeah, so what I got can it. they do? Yeah, yeah I got it. So, uh, first of all, obviously, uh, to understand that um, we, um, how do we call it to this? We don't really to be happy, to be in peace. We don't really need anything. From the outside, having that thought, we start to say, "Okay, I'm going to organize myself to sit down in a room. Go, I don't know, go room by room, step by step, space by space. Today I'm sitting in the in my room and saying, okay, this. Uh, how many times I use this? Uh, how often I wear this?" And if the question is no, it's been one year that I don't use it. And you say, okay, is there is something that I really might use maybe, I don't know, for an emergency or maybe for something special? No, okay, I don't really need it. I don't know. It's simple like that. I really, sorry, Eric, that I don't have a, like a professional answer to give it to you like, oh, this is, this, oh, those are the steps, you know, because uh, but I it's, think I, that's, but I, I think, think it's like think that. that okay, sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. It's taking the time. I say, okay, today, today I have my day off, and today I'm going to do this in my room. I'm going to go through all the options that I have in my room, and just telling to myself, do I really need this? How often I I, I use this? It doesn't make any sense to accumulate stuff. If tomorrow I have to move. And I have just two hours, I don't know, to put all my belongings and to move. Do I, I re, those two hours are going to be enough? Or I really need to hire a big truck with all the stuff and it will be an issue and a stress, all the moving, all the stuff. Why? No. <laughs> that's, so, an <laughs> that's an amazing answer, Soledad, I, because I really like this simple way of thinking, whether I'm using it, I'm not using it, I use it, I don't use it, and then getting rid of stuff. 
Now, I'm just curious because you mentioned this situation where you have to pack all your belongings in two hours. Now, in your case, would you be able to pack everything in two hours and move? Yeah, I will be able to stand up and move by walking. <laughs> the only That's thing amazing. that I would like, sorry for the, for the ones that use urine therapy, my pee, aging there, I was like, oh, my pee, my shards of pee that I accumulate for months. Maybe that it was going to be my only worry, really. <laughs> because for me, my pee is pressure. I was like, oh, it's, it's, it's months and months accumulating my pee to use it, and now I have to leave. Yeah. But really, no. Apart mm. from that, I don't really use too much. To be honest, mm. I prefer not to have a cell phone, not to have, ev have everything. But in a point, we have to use this stuff in a positive way for this. Yes. This is this is pre, uh, pr priceless. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's out, so in a point, okay, this is is important, but I don't really need too much. And yeah, I can be able to. If you said to me, okay, we are moving in five minutes, you have to have all your stuff. I for sure I will be ready, ready Amazing. to go. Amazing, fascinating, <laughs> fascinating. Okay, um, okay, so we are actually we are about to finish our conversation. Now, guys, the audience, do you have any more questions? You have the last opportunity to ask your question because we are getting closer to two hours. If, if you, <laughs> apart from the question, um, Arik, if you allow me to read something that I was prepared for the end. Absolutely, absolutely, be... yeah, absolutely. And then uh, we, I, I have my very last question about how people can get in touch with you, get help from you and stuff like that. We're going to talk about that as well. But uh, yes, guys, so please unmute yourself and ask your questions. You have the last chance for today. It's me again. Hola, Soledad. Hi. It's just, I find this really interesting, this minimalism thing. I've seen that there are a lot of people who is really attached to physical things. How do you handle that? Because I, 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 maybe it's not for everybody, but you could tell me if that is so. How would you handle that? That with myself or with others having that attachment? Hmm. Uh, baby pardon? Sorry, uh, how I handle uh, other people having oh, yes. that attachment? Yes, if you want to help... Yes, mm -hmm. you want to help or, or advise someone who is really oh. attached to physical things, what would you tell him or her uh, how to handle that? Because I've noticed there are a lot of people who's really attached to, to things. So what's the start point to, to live in them? For sure, it's working with emotions that you are not, okay. the sensation that you uh, um, are not full, fulfilled. I think the word is in English, you are not complete. Uh, oh, right, so, yeah. And you have emotions that you need to, uh, the, the lack of something. And you have some emotions that you want to feel and you are not feeling it. Mm, there is something okay. that, that is not in balance. That's why you are looking outside for things. Could be an object, could be a relationship. Good, good. Being aware of the emotions that the things awaken you, and then you're looking for them. All right, exactly. thank you, thank you. Excellent. Imbalance, imbalance, and you are not in a, in alignment with yourself. All so right. What you think, what you think, what you feel, and what you and what you uh, say, and your actions are not in alignment. Are not in balance. Uh, so All right. that's why you 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 sometimes. Emotions are, are clue with it. Just working, obviously, I have to see uh, the personal case, no? But in general, I can say uh, that to you, working in the, in which emotions are you uh, holding onto that you have the sensation that you need or, or you, or, or, you know, uh, and, and that, uh, is making you accumulating things or it's making you to be at, in attach or to be in control in a relationship because of the the lack of of, of that in your side. 
Thank you so much. That's the key point. I, I know that now. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Enough. Okay. <clears throat> Ciao. Hey guys. Gracias. <laughs> okay, guys, anything else? Anyone else has any questions? Okay, so like that. So, yes, please read to us what you have prepared. Ah, yes. Thank you for the space. Yeah, I, just something very simple and then what I, I really wanted to, to read at the end because I forgot to talk about this uh, phrase that I found in a book. I didn't read the book yet. I have that pendant, but uh, a friend of mine uh, read me a couple of pages of this book and I took this phrase from this book. The book is uh, The School of Gods of uh, Elio Di Diana. And um, the phrase is, uh, it's about belief, belief system, and it's, it's about food and this, the, this dead, um, talking about the dead. And it says, the belief that death is inevitable is unhealthy for humans. Now, this is related with uh, our belief system. If we believe that death is inevitable, uh, we just we are having just an unhealthy thought that is not good for us and from the moment of birth we have that belief that death is inevitable and that is what I, that is the phrase that i want to share with you and something else that is very short <laughs> sorry arik is it's absolutely fine we have uh, time it's, uh, um this i took this and i made a little changes because the way I am, I made changes, but I mean, the, the general message is, is the same from a book of Vipassana. Uh, it says, uh, from right understanding proceeds right thought. From right thought proceeds right speech. From right speech proceeds right action. From right action proceeds right livelihood. From right livelihood proceeds right discipline, practice, or, or persistence. From right discipline, from right practice, or persistence proceeds right concentration. From right concentration proceeds right wisdom. And from right wisdom proceeds right liberation wow that's it <laughs> amazing amazing thank you so much so <laughs> so so that before we finish before we close this session um so if people want to get in touch with you um get get help by you do you provide any kind of coaching services or personal guidance or any services like that um, I have some people that consult me, uh, especially in Spanish, more than in English. Uh, I'm very private. I, the social media that I have uh, are not to, to really show that uh, because it's not the way I resonate. But uh, people can, can, yeah, can ask me anything or we can start building a... A relationship through through WhatsApp, or they can send me a private message in Instagram or Facebook, and we can talk about life. Amazing. <laughs> I'm pretty open. So very yeah. good. Yeah, I can tell with you that. Very good, Soledad. So we will, if you want to put any contact details below this video, once it's available on YouTube, you just let me know. And yeah, yeah and, and we can definitely talk about another session like that, maybe one or two months. You know. Actually, for now, we are booked speaker speakers wise for, I guess, the next two months or close to that. But then after that, wow. yeah, 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 we have quite a lot of people and also people from the group. They contact people they know or they have in mind and then they arrange. So that's the idea like that people actually take responsibility for making it the reality of these kind of meetings. So I'm really happy about that. And yes, yeah, so let's wrap it up. Let's close this session for now. Thank you so much, Soledad. Thank you, Arik, yeah. and all, all, of, uh, all of the beings that are 
on the other side. Uh, yeah, on the other side. Thank yeah. You. And thank you guys sorry for coming. If I, if I was, sorry if I was a little bit nervous. I'm not used to this. I know. You were <laughs> incredible. It was amazing. Really, really. Estuviste yeah. muy bien. Estuviste muy bien, oh. Solea. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Absorbi okay, guys. Absorbimos todo lo que dijiste. <laughs> okay. Thank Perfect. you so much, guys. Bye-bye.